Hello everybody, we're back in Windows 10 and today I wanted to show you the new task manager and uh, again this is coming from a Windows 7 user perspective. Uh, I skipped Windows 8 so um, if this looks uh, trivial and uninteresting to you former Windows 8 users um, I apologize a lot of this stuff uh, may already have been in Windows 8. Um, but these are things that I am finding uh, interesting as I play with Windows 10 uh, having upgraded from Windows 7. So I just wanted to share some of this uh, with people uh, who might be thinking of upgrading or um, you know might be looking to learn something that they didn't know about Windows 10 as they're uh, getting used to it. So anyway, uh, the task manager now, um, I believe you can still, uh, let's see if my recording works here, delete and hit task manager um, and you can get to it that way. Uh, you can also right click on the start menu and you have this really nice list of really useful things here um, and task manager is among them. One thing I wanted to point out about this is that uh, in a previous video I was saying I thought settings was in here um, and let me just look again make sure that I'm not just not seeing it um, but yeah so control panel is in here if you right click on the windows you know on the start menu if you left click settings is there so just another example of really confused interface design. Um, you know, I guess thinking back, Windows has always kind of had that problem where um, things are duplicated and, and um, sort of split up and organized in strange ways. Um, so this isn't necessarily something brand new to Windows 10. Windows has always kind of suffered from this. But anyway, let's look at this task manager. Um, so it's it's got that Windows 10 look to it for sure. Um, and you've got, uh, you'll notice right away, you've got processes, but there's no, um, uh, was it just called programs tab, something like that before, that would show your open, um, your open programs. Now it starts you off with processes, um, which may or may not be useful to people. Uh, it's a little bit more detailed, which is nice. Um, so we can, you know, sort by CPU, memory usage, disk usage, network usage, um, and that seems pretty, pretty trivial, pretty easy to see. Uh, the color coding is kind of nice because um, it does let you compare across columns, whereas normally you would, uh, you know, if you sorted by CPU, um, you wouldn't easily be able to tell after having sorted by CPU what the you know how the memory is comparing so this color code is pretty nice um, it lets you quickly at a glance see um, what is using the most resources across all categories uh, even after you've sorted so that's that's a nice touch I like that uh, let's look at performance here um, the performance tab um, is a bit weird because um, there's this thing called um, the resource monitor uh, and this looks exactly as far as I can tell exactly the same as it did in Windows 7 um, so let's just actually let's uh, let's use the, the snap feature here um, since we can and it seems to work a lot better than uh, it did in Windows 7 um, in the task manager if you look here you can go through CPU usage chart memory your disk usage uh, and your network usage um, and uh, you can see kind of some stats here about your CPU and about your RAM and about your disks that kind of thing um, but you can't as far as I can tell you can't sort of see them all um, all together well graph summary view no nope, that's not what we wanted um, so that's a weird tool I'm not sure why you'd want to see this without all the other information, but um, but you can't. You can only see one thing at a time. So really, the resource monitor I think is still um, probably a more useful tool in this overview tab. In particular, you can still see all your processes, and you can see your CPU, your disk usage, your network usage, and your memory all together. Um, it's not this big, pretty chart, um, but you can see everything at a glance, which is kind of nice. Um, so just this is also another example of where Windows 10 has split out the same information 
into two different places. Um, but this so this thing here, the task manager performance tab, this looks like a tablet display. You know, like this looks like um, it would be useful for a little screen with big fat fingers to, you know, to poke these big fat buttons. Um, and the amount of information you get is just very minimal. Um, and on mobile devices, tablets and phones, you just don't have that much real estate and you have to be minimal in order to make, you know, get the information across in a usable way. Um, so this is very appropriate for a mobile device, but um, I feel like this, although it is not pretty, uh, this is much more useful for a desktop device. Um, it's just much more powerful. You get so much more detail. Um, so that is a common theme I'm finding with Windows 10 and a common, kind of a common complaint. Um, so let's, let's close that and let's look at the rest of the new task manager um, app history. Um, this is not program history. Uh, so again, we've split out the idea of regular desktop programs and apps, um, which is just a totally artificial split. I mean, a program is a program. Um, it just so happens apps, I'm putting that in air quotes, uh, refers specifically to something optimized for small screen touch, you know, small display, touch display, uh, touch screen mobile devices. Uh, and they're generally less powerful and um, they don't make any sense in a desktop environment. But we've, we've apparently split the terminology now. Um, but we have this whole category app history to show you sort of like the cumulative history of how much CPU your your app has used in its entire lifetime, which is a weird statistic. I'm not sure why that would be useful. I don't know, maybe somebody uh, somebody has a reason for wanting that. Also, network. Um, this makes a little more sense because if you're on a mobile device and you're using a cellular network and you have a data plan, um, this might be a very useful category. However, on a desktop, um, neither of these things is particularly useful. Network still might be, but we're only looking at apps. So you'll notice um, I use I downloaded the Netflix app uh, right away when I got Windows 10 just to see what the whole app thing was like. And um, Netflix, I'm not sure it was marginally useful, um, but really the the web-based app, the browser, um, you know, just go to Netflix.com. That works at least as well. Uh, so I used this for a while to try it out and then quit using it. Um, so you don't see anything else in here. I mean, you don't see Excel. You don't see uh, Chrome. You don't see the games that I play. You don't see Bandicam, which is what I used to record. You don't see Adobe Premiere in here. Um, so because you don't see all your actual programs, this is kind of, I guess, useless. If it had everything in it, this might be a useful data display. But with only apps, I just don't get the point of that. So, um, And on a, on a tablet or a phone, you would only have apps. So if you just put everything in this list, only the apps would show for those devices, which would be how it seems to be designed, but then when you bring it to the desktop, it leaves out, you know, the vast majority of all the programs you use. Okay, let's move along. Um, let's, uh, let me do this. We'll go um, msconfig. This is where you used to edit your startup options. So um, what, what programs and services start? Um, well, I guess not services have always been separate, but what uh, what programs start when Windows starts? Uh, so if you go to msconfig to look for that now, it uh, redirects you to manage startup items, use the startup section of the task manager, and gives you a link to open the task manager. Um, so this startup tab is now uh, what used to be in msconfig. So uh, this is kind of nice. You can see what the startup impact is. And it doesn't, uh, well, let's see, degree of impact from CPU and disk activity, um, which in effect means how much time does it add to your, your startup, your boot process. Um, 
and you can see like you know this is for my uh, Corsair keyboard um, it's uh, one of those um, RGB keyboards so it has a utility to manage all the LEDs and everything um, <clears throat> So uh, you can see that has a high startup impact because um, it's controlling an actual input device. So it has to get that all started up before Windows boots so I can actually use the keyboard. Um, <clears throat> and like Chrome, you know, I think this is just um, to give you quick load times when you open Chrome, but you can see the startup impact is low here. So a nice way to kind of categorize through your, your startup stuff and uh, quickly triage through it and see if there's things that you want to get out of there <clears throat> and you'll see I do have one disabled thing here um, when I was still using Windows 7 I had this actual multiple monitors which uh, cleaned up the way Windows 7 dealt with multiple monitors instead in, in, in terms of um, putting the taskbar on both monitors and uh, um, spanning a, a picture across both monitors that kind of thing Windows 7 did not handle that well at all so this was the utility I was working now that I'm at Windows 10 um, I haven't uh, uninstalled the program yet but I did disable just by right click right clicking and um, enable or disable would be here so that is the startup tab uh, users tab I don't believe this was in the task manager before not certain about that but um, if you were running uh, multiple uh, if you had multiple users um, on your computer, uh, it would it looks like this is real time data, so not not historical. Um, so this would be whatever concurrent users are are logged into your machine. I would think so for a lot of desktop PCs, and certainly for phones and tablets, this would always just have one item. I would imagine. Um, so in a sense, this is just giving you your overall. Uh, CPU and memory usage disk and network same thing that you'd find in the performance tab same thing that you'd find in that resource monitor um, But it does uh, then break it down, you know uh, the processes again, but by user so Depending on what your network situation is this might be useful um, Details this is like the process <laughs> uh, Tab I guess but it's just got more headings to it um, I'm not sure why those headings couldn't just be added on here and, and put that in one tab. Um, but this is more like what the, the processes tab looked like in Windows 7. So, um, so that information is still kind of there. Um, so again, it looks like it looks like Windows 10 is is this mushing together of two different ways of doing things you know this this mobile oriented way and this traditional desktop way and instead of really integrating them well and thinking about making a good user experience they just took those two halves and sort of just mushed them together and this is what we get so um i'm i'm seeing these as artifacts of that design process um whether or not that's truly how these things happen or not uh, i don't know i'm not a Microsoft developer. So, uh, lastly, we have services. Now, services. I don't think we're in um, Task Manager before, but um, MS Config still has services in it. Um, so this looks like it's almost the same thing. We've got the name and the status. And the well, yeah, name and status I guess are the same, but um, then we have other columns in these two views. Um, so that's kind of interesting. And uh, looks like that is okay. Yeah, and then we can click this link down at the bottom to open the actual services um, tool as well, which I believe would be you would find that under administrative tools in um, your your system. Uh, setting somewhere so um, a little bit more redundancy different information in different places um, so it can make it a little challenging to find really what you're trying to find um, apparently you can just suck the whole task manager down to nothing but 
a list of programs that are open with not even any resource usage. Uh, so that's a bit weird. Okay, so that is the task manager. Um, uh, let me just uh, go through quickly here. Uh, these menu options are pretty much the same as they've always been. Interesting to note though, these drop-down menus are very traditional drop-down menus. Um, however, as I was showing in the file manager, so like for example when we open the recycle bin, there's no longer drop-down menus. Uh, there's these tabs with this horrible ribbon. I know some people like it, some people find it to be uh, a nice way to organize tools, but it's just so bulky and busy and hard to just visually quickly see what you want. Um, all these little images are, you know, if you study them, they make sense, but at a glance, this is just too much visual stuff here. It's not helpful. Um, so this interface is used in the file manager, but then when you come into something like the task manager, we're back to the traditional menus. Um, so again, a bit confused design there. Um, but performance tab down the bottom, you also have a link to open the resource monitor. Um, no additional information there or there or there or there, but on the services tab, you, have, you can go directly to the services tool as well. Okay, I think that is all I wanted to show you for today. Just a few nice little tweaks um, to the experience uh, that were pretty nice, like this color coding of resource usage. Uh, that I, I like that. That is a useful, clean, fast way to get information across to the user. Um, but some of the other changes in here are a bit strange, um, in particular duplicating the performance information from the resource monitor and here and um, not making that very easy to use or, or at least not making it, um, it's not presenting information in a way that's useful uh, to me anyway. Okay, so uh, this was Windows 10. Uh, I hope this was uh, an interesting uh, little peek into the task manager. Uh, I hope you've noticed that the, the uh, video quality is much improved. Um, after messing around with things for a long time, I, I got this to record at 2560 by 1440, um, which is the native resolution of my monitor, so things should look nice and crisp now. Uh, I was recording in uh, 1080 before. So things looked a little bit fuzzy, which I didn't like. So anyway, uh, if you found this useful, leave a like on the video. That would be much appreciated. Uh, check out the rest of the stuff on my channel if you're interested. And uh, leave a comment, question. I read all my uh, feedback and try to personally respond to everybody um, that comments. So anyway, everybody have a great day, and I'll see you around.